theme verse, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So we're, gonna, we're actually going to become whatever we're thinking about. And so you guys know this. I mean, if you've ever had an addiction um, or like a bad habit, if you've ever had that, you don't, you don't get rid of that bad habit just because of you, you, you change actions. No, it's actually because or else everyone, it would be easy to get rid of like that. Just change your actions. Just change your actions. Anyone get rid of it. You hear these different stories all the time about someone who wanted to quit smoking or qu- quit drinking and and which, by the way, those things, those things, they're not, they're not just a habit problem. They're actually a thought problem. That's what it is. <clears throat> Addictions are just the manifestation. It's, it's, it, it's the action of a thought problem. Okay, it's, it, it, so it goes deeper than just the action. So, so some people, you know, they, 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 and you guys may know some who were smoked for years and years and years and tried to quit, couldn't, tried to quit, couldn't, but then something in their life happened, didn't it? And it changed their mind. Something in their life, maybe it was a tragedy, maybe it was something difficult, maybe it was something happened where, where we said, you know what, I, I can't do it, I don't want to do it anymore, it's actually just, it was a shift in our thinking, I had something similar happen to me years ago when I, when I came to Christ and, and gave my life to Christ, and those of, you, those of you that have done that know that there is an instantaneous salvation, there is, God, God actually just immediately, there's a lot of things that he just works and deals with and changes us immediately but then there is also this ongoing transformation called the bible calls sanctification there's this ongoing process of becoming like christ we're learning in this series that that becoming like christ is actually the thought process that we are transformed in our thoughts to become more and more like christ it just manifests itself in actions one of the things that i like immediately quit was like alcohol and drugs and those things i was doing I did also quit smoking cigarettes. I used to do that as, as, as well. Um, but it was about a month in to my new life in Christ. And um, I was 20 years old at this point. Now, I had a, a saving faith and a, a baptism when I was 12 years old, but, but really just was not living for God for so long. And I, I just fully surrendered my life at about 20 years old, at 20 years old. And, and it was about a month in, though, that I started, there was this, there's, there was this part of me that was just craving some nicotine, okay? Any, any, you don't have to raise your hands, but those of you know what I'm talking about, whether it's nicotine or, I don't know, other addiction or habit that you have, uh, there was a part of me that was just like, like, that's what you need, that's what you want. Which, by the way, if you are in Christ, you have two parts to you. You have, you have a spirit man, the Bible calls. You have this spirit nature that was awakened. It was brought to life. When, the, when you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit indwelled your spirit and brought it to life. You have this new nature, the Bible says, and, and it wants to please God. But then there's this still this other side of you that does not want to please God, that wants to please itself and, and has its own habits and addictions and patterns of thinking. And so I was about a month in and there was this other side of me going, you need a smoke. That's what you need. You need, you need some nicotine. And, and I was trying to just silence the other side of me that was like, no, don't do it. You lo- don't do that to your body. You love God. Keep yourself pure and all these other things. I'm like, I'm silencing it. I'm trying to block out that other part of me. And I go to the store and I buy some singles. I mean, smokers know what I'm talking about. You go buy some singles, 25 cents, get a few singles. So I went and gave 50 cents. I didn't want to buy the whole pack. You know, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to get a little single and, and, and smoke my single. I don't know why I bought two. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe smoke two in a row or something. I don't know. But I was, I was jonesing for a cigarette. So I get my cigarette and I, I save it all the way back. I get into the driveway and I, and I sit down in the, in, in the driveway and, I'm, and I light up that, that cigarette and I take that, that puff of nicotine and inhale it in. And immediately, immediately, I felt this brokenness. I felt this displeasure. It just, it just, it just it, it, I was not satisfied like what I, I thought it would. I mean, there was a part of me that was saying, that's what I needed, that's what, that's what would satisfy me. But as I did it, I did not feel satisfied. And I was, there's something shifted inside of me at that moment. And I, and I looked at this cigarette, and I, and, and I told it, I, I said, you don't satisfy me anymore. And, I, and, and see, that, I, I, you just don't do what you said you were going to do. What I thought you were going to do, you don't actually do that anymore. I stomped it out. I ripped up the other cigarette, and I haven't smoked ever since. And the reason is because of, of not because I decided to change my actions and my habits and I got a patch or whatever it is, and I'm not against that, the gum and all that stuff. Do what you got to do. But if you don't change the way you think, you'll never change your life. You'll always come back to the old patterns. So write it down this way. 
This is the theme, the thought, the, the big idea of this series. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. We just never will. So if we really want to have the best year ever, we want this year to be, in which it can be, it truly can be. And what I'm, I'm cur- encouraging you to do is just to make this the best year ever spiritually. And if this is the best year ever spiritually, this has the potential truly to be the best year ever. It does. Now, now I know like, like um, church can make things sound really easy, things that are kind of hard and a lot more difficult. And here I am, you know, talking about changing our thought life. And what I want to teach you today, it is not easy. It is a discipline. But I want to teach you how to master the, the transformed thinking, uh, to master the art of transformed thinking thinking like it's it it, but it's it's not easy let me give you a few um, thoughts here a few truths about change thinking that's just a reality and then I'm gonna get really practical and I'm gonna help you walk away today with some tools that you can transform the way you think you can master the art you can rediscipline your mind to align it to God's will and word and you can have transformed thoughts how many believe that and say amen? amen amen let me give you some truth today about change thinking write it down number one change thinking is not automatic, all right? It, it isn't. It's just not easy. not automatic. Just because you come to church, just because you, you, you change some actions about your life, and these things, don't get me wrong, these things are good, but it's just not going to happen. I mean, we, we, we think things are just going to magically get better tomorrow. It's not just magically. Your thoughts will never change, listen, until you allow God to change them. It, it, it's going to, it's not going to be automatic. So uh, some of us don't think that the problem, some of us don't think he has the answers. And that's why we don't come to him with him. Maybe he doesn't have the answers, or some of us don't even want him involved in the process. So we don't come to him, and we just block God out of our thoughts. We block God out of our day, out of our problems. And in the Psalms actually talks about this. In Psalm 10:4, it says, In his pride, the wicked don't seek God. In all his thoughts, there's no room for God. Man, I just stop turning to him. I'm not thinking about him. I'm not including him. But change thinking, it won't just happen. You guys, there has to be a game plan. If you, wanna, if you want to have the best year ever, you want to have a transformed life, if you want this year to be different, man, there's got to be a game plan, you guys. I'm going to help you out with that game plan and creating what can be a plan to change your thoughts. Otherwise, you guys, you're just going to end up at the same place next year. But at some point, we just got to decide, you got, this is going to be different. This year is going to be different. I'm going to try something new. I'm, I'm not going to just try to change habits. I'm going to try to change the inside. I'm going to try to change the way I think. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 with me. Uh, the, 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 the Bible, the New Testament, in particular Ephesians, I have a few verses for you. That Paul has some amazing things to talk about and say about your thought life. There, there's some, some amazing truths about your thought life. Look what he says. He says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Now, let me pause right here because the Paul is writing to Christians. Right. He's writing, this is important for you to understand, he's writing to the church at Ephesus, and he's saying, look, I know you guys um, know Jesus, I know, but, but I need to insist on something for you guys, that can you stop living like you don't know Jesus? I mean, I know you know Jesus, but you're living, but why? He says, don't live like the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. I mean, you know Jesus, but you're thinking like the world. You've accepted Jesus, but you're thinking like, like, like you don't know him. Your thoughts are not changed yet. I mean, we can come to church and we can hear the word, but sometimes we don't discipline our thought life to align itself with God's word. He says they are darkened in their understanding. And look, look at this, and separated from the life of God. Do you know that you can, you can know Jesus, but be separated from the life that God wants you to live? Because you're thinking. You can. Just because your thought life, you will separate yourself from the life God wants you to live. So change thinking, you guys. It's not automatic. Number two, change thinking is going to take effort. All right? It's not just going to happen. It's not going to be easy. Change is a renewal process. Like I said, salvation is instant. That part is, is, is instant, but Change thinking is, is, is more about the quality of your life on earth. It is, will you, are you going to walk in peace? Are you going to walk in purpose? Are you going to walk in victory? That all has to do with being transformed by the renewing of our minds. It's a day-by-day process. 
that every single one of us are on. None of us is, are already there yet. I'm on it. You're on it. God is transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Look what Ephesians, continuing on Ephesians chapter 4, says, Since you then have heard all about him, and you've learned the truth that is in Jesus, and that's a lot of you here, a lot of you here, you've, you've learned about him. You know all about him. And you learn that truth that's in, in Jesus. Throw off your old evil nature and your former way of life. He's talking about the duality of your, 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 what's living inside of you, that you have a side that wants to please God. The Bible kind of it calls this your soul, okay? That's your soul life. It's where you get your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. And then there's this spirit side of you that is, that's the side that's been awakened by the Holy Spirit, the eternal part of you. Paul says, look, you know Jesus. Man, you've been, you, you learned the truth. But what you need to do is throw off that old self. You need, to, you need to get rid of the old evil nature and the former way of life, which is, I like this thought, this rotten through and through, full of lust and deception. What that means is, is full of un, uncontrolled appetites and believing the lies. That's what our old nature, our old nature, that old evil sinful nature is full of uncontrolled appetites and just believe in the lies of the enemy. And the thing about the old nature, you guys, the old nature does not take effort at all. It's easy, right? It's just, it's just doing what you feel like, you do it. What you want, you do it. It takes no effort to walk in your old nature. The new nature takes, it takes effort. You need to throw off the old nature. He says, instead, there must be a spiritual win- renewal. Where is the spir- spiritual renewal taking place? In your thoughts and attitudes. You must display, he says, a new nature because you are a brand new person created in God's likeness. You were created to be righteous, holy, and true. Now, don't get, don't get frustrated with that process. It is a process. We, we're going to live with this duality of, of, of nature. But at any time that, that we stop throwing off that old self, it'll rise back up creep its head, and ask for more, uncontrolled appetites, walking in deception. Don't get frustrated with it. It's important because here's this last one. Change thinking will change my life. Change thinking will change my life. And some of you are going through a tough time right now. And why is that? Why are we going through sometimes like like a tough season? Can, Can I tell you that I believe it's because we're convinced that our happiness is determined by our circumstances? That's why, we, that's why it's tough, because, because I have surrendered the control of my happiness to my circumstances. You know what? Some of us have already, already surrendered the control of this year. So this year, 2018, is going to be good, is going to be great, or it's going to be lousy, all dependent upon what comes to you. So whatever the circumstances, you know what? 2018, your assessment of it is, is it was good depend on what happened to you. It was whatever happened to me, and that's how we measure the success, the greatness, the effectiveness. Can I tell you that your circumstances do not dictate whether this is going to be the best year ever or not? Like, like, like you, you yourself hold your destiny in your hands. You hold within your hands and within your thoughts whether this year is going to be the best year ever or not, and it does not depend on what South Korea does. Okay, it does not depend on one on your job or your career or your financial situation. It does not depend on who's in office, who's in government, who's in control, who's not. It it does not depend on any of those things. Peace does not depend on those things. Peace comes when God gives it to you when you submit your thoughts to him. Okay, which reminds me of this this story I heard. There was this country preacher who had a teenage son and his teenage son was 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 not, um, he was reluctant on just picking a career path and just very, very, uh, just undecided. So, so while the boy is at school, the, the preacher thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to test him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put three items in his room. So when he comes home, you know, I'll just see which item he, he chooses. So, so he goes in, into his room and he puts a Bible, a silver dollar, and, and, a, and a bottle of whiskey, Okay. And, and, and he says, whichever one he chooses is going is to turn. If he, if he chooses the Bible, he's going to be a preacher. If he chooses the silver dollar, he's going to be a businessman. And if it's the whiskey, he's going to be a drunk, man. And, and, and so he says, you know what I'll do is I'll hide behind the door. I'm going to see which one he, he chooses. So um, the boy comes in, 
and and uh, he tossed his books on the bed. He saw the objects, and he kind of curiously just stared at them for just a moment. And then finally, he puts the Bible under his arm, and he placed the silver dollar in his pocket, and he took a big old squig of the whiskey, puts it down, and runs out of the house. And the, and the preacher said, oh, Lord, have mercy. He's going to go into Congress. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. All right. So, listen, your peace does not, it doesn't matter what, co- what, what government is doing, what, what your circumstances Peace is something God gives you when you think godly thoughts. Now, look, I'm telling you, like, like, and if you will buy into this, that this year can be the best year ever if you, if you believe it. If, if, you, if you will start thinking the right thoughts, see, because it doesn't, it doesn't really determine what is happening to you, but your response that is happening to you that will determine what, the kind, what success is going to happen this year. Here are the thoughts. The Bible gives us the thoughts we're supposed to be thinking. Philippians chapter 4, whatever is true and noble, right and pure, whatever is lovely and admirable, if anything's excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And it doesn't matter what's actually happening to you, the circumstances. He says, if you have these things in you, the peace of God's going to be with you. The peace of God will be with you. Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use when we created them. We got to do something different. We have, to, we have to try something different this year. And I'm encouraging you to try something different and to put it into practice. Now, I want to show you how to have transformed thinking. How do we master? We can, we can do this. We can, and it's, it's, uh, don't get me wrong, it, it's not automatic. And it's going to take some effort. Like, it's not going to be easy. But you can do this. You can, you can change the way you think. Let me give you really five very practical ways that you can do this and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Write these down. Number one, we have to find a plan to control our thoughts. That's number one. Find a plan to control our thoughts. Now, some of us have been fed bad thinking. Like we're, like we're constantly, and can I tell you, like for a lot of us, that primary source of that bad thinking comes from the internet. It comes from maybe social media or areas of the internet. And I'm telling you, for some of us, you, you just got to declare, man, this is going to be the year. Like, this is the year that that thing is not going to consume my time, my energy. It's not going to feed me thoughts anymore. I'm not going to be a lone ranger on that device anymore, okay? And no matter, maybe you need to get some accountability in this department. Maybe you need to put, like, some safe eyes or something on it. But, but we need to find a plan to control our thoughts. And can I tell you the best way to do this? The best plan to control your thoughts, not in your notes, but you may want to write it down. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Get the Word of God in you. Hey, everybody, read the Bible. It's amazing to me what the Word of God does and how it just transforms the way we think. And I don't want you to just read it out of a discipline. Don't just read it out of it. Like, read it to consume it. Read it to, to get it inside of you and watch how it will take the negative, the, the nasty, the, the demonic, just those thoughts about yourself that are just that putting you down, and it will replace it with the way God sees you. It's powerful. The Word of God is powerful. In fact, the Bible is not like any other book. It breathes. It's alive. It has a, a heartbeat to it. I mean, it, it has power in it. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says that the Word of God is alive. It's living. It's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. And look at this. I want to concentrate on this phrase for just a moment. It penetrates even to the, the, the dividing of soul and spirit. Now here, check it out. Listen, the reason why some of us have an undisciplined mind, an undisciplined thought life, why, why maybe it manifests itself in attitudes and in, in, in habits, in the wrong actions and things like that, the reason why it is because our soul is not separated from our spirit. You, so your soul is, is, the, is the carnal side of you. It's, that, it's, the, it's the side of where, where your own will, your own emotions, your own, your own thoughts and, and for a lot of us, our soul and our, and our spirit are so messed together, they're so intertwined that, that we don't know what part of us is God and divine and what part of us is just us. Or maybe there is a part of us that's like wants to do what's good and wants to see life flow from us and righteousness and purity and holiness. But there's just another side of us that just kind of is, is putting a lid on that thing. Have you ever felt that way? 
Well, the, the Bible says that, that, that the, the word of God is the incision instrument of God that separates that which is divine inside of you and that which is carnal inside of you. So that, so that no matter what can happen, I mean, you, can have, you could be having a bad day. It could be a, a difficult circumstance. That you can have a demanding boss. You can have crazy kids. You can have whatever it is. But in the middle of all that, you can, because you have the word of God in you, it's, it is not affecting your divine life from your soul life. You can still walk in the spirit no matter the circumstances. Are you hearing me today? This is why you need to read the Bible. And this has been like a common theme every week. And, I'm, and, I, and I don't care. You know why this is a common theme every week, this read your Bible thing? Because if you think it's, if, that you can have the best year ever and not have the word of God, if you think that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind and becoming a brand new person and not reading the Bible every day, you are fooling yourself. You are fooling yourself. You need to find a plan. And the best plan, God's plan, is his word. You need to get the word of God inside of you. I was doing counseling with this couple and, and uh, I, I challenged them because, because they didn't have a strong word life. They were Christians, they were followers of Christ, they were church attenders, but they just were not in their own word. The only word they got was either on the radio or someone else speaking or maybe when I'm preaching and stuff and the notes they have and there was just no, dis which is sadly the case for a lot of Christians. And then we wonder why, like we have these wrong habits and attitudes and actions coming forward because your soul and spirit is not divided it's, it, you don't have this instrument that God has given us to actually help you divide those things, divine life from soul life. And I challenged him. I said, you guys need to get in your word. Hey, if you're serious and you want to see this thing whole and healed and healthy and you want the best for your marriage and for your life, get, have a daily time in God's word. And I told him, I said, you need your own daily time. And then at night, read together. Just one of you read, the other you listen. And then, and then switch that off, but get the word of God in you. I, the next week, the woman comes back to me and she says, Pastor, we had this argument. It happened again. We had a fight. But usually in our fights, they kind of escalate. It goes, he does this and I do this. And he does this. And I, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Then I go here. Then all of a sudden we're yelling. Then all of a sudden we're name calling. Then all of a sudden we kind of just can't stand each other. And we, ha we, have, to, we have to move away from each other and get, get, get some distance. Which is like so many arguments in families and in houses today. But she said, but this time. He got mad and he, you know, he said some things, but this time there was something else inside of me feeding me thoughts and feeding me truth. And I didn't respond. I didn't escalate it, but I responded differently. And, and, and we didn't have the same argument. We actually resolved it. And I, and, and I'm telling you, I said, that's the power of the word of God. Because you put the word of God in you, it fed you the right thoughts, the right spirit. It actually divided that part of you that probably wanted to get your way and yell back and call a name back from that which was divine inside of you. And you were able to discern the thoughts and the attitudes of your heart and then choose righteousness. Come on, somebody, you need the word of God in your life. And if you really want to live for God and live differently and have this year be the best year ever, get the word of God inside. Read your Bible, okay? Read your Bible. Hey, everybody, can I tell you something? Read your Bible. You know what I mean? Read your Bible. We just need to get the Bible inside of us. Here's number two. Number two, find a place to think your thoughts. You got to find a place to think your thoughts. In other words, there's got to be some place in your day where you turn the volume of the world down. I mean, the, the, the world is loud. And if you just let it, it'll shout out God's spirit. If you don't, if you don't at some, even if it's just for five minutes in the day, that you just, you just turn down the volume of the world and you focus in on God, you have to have that place where you let God speak to you as you are speaking to God. And of course, I'm talking about prayer here, but write it down this way. Have a daily conversation with God. I started using this language, a daily conversation with God, because years ago I was discipling a guy, and he came to me and he was telling me, he said, Pastor, I'm just having trouble praying. I just can't find the words. I don't know what to say, and I feel awkward, and I just like, I end up just kind of like not doing it because it's so awkward for me. And he's just kind of rambling on to me, telling me, and I tell him, well, brother, you don't have a problem talking, it seems like, so why don't you try, why don't you just try talking to God? Just, just have a conversation with God. And, and, and by the way, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't need your formality, church. 
God does not want your formality as you talk to him. God, does, God doesn't speak in King James Version, okay? He doesn't speak in, in thou's and those. He can throw all that out, all right? It doesn't need to rhyme. It doesn't need to sound pretty. None of that stuff. It doesn't need to be alliterated all beginning with R's or something like that. It just talk to God. Just have a daily conversation with God. Slow down your life. Every day, every day, just slow it down, turn down the volume every day just to have a time of conversation with God. And if time is an issue, if you're like me, maybe you say, man, I'm busy. I got a busy day. I'm always doing things. Can I just encourage you just to start with one or two sentences? Just even if it's just like, God, I got a busy day today, and, but I want to please you. I want to walk with you. Help me to choose your will and know your will today, Jesus. Thank you. Even if it's just that, I'm telling you, he'd rather hear that than nothing at all. And the reason why we don't, can I tell you, the reason why we don't even go to him with just that is because um, shame and guilt. A lot of us, we don't go to God with just, just because we, we're, we're ashamed that we can't give him more. And we think like he wants more and it should be more and it should look better and it should be on my knees and I should have you know, hallelujahs, or have like a closet to go into, and if I don't have a closet to go in, and if it doesn't look righteous and look pretty, then and we don't, I don't have enough time, and so there's this shame that like, well, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. But you, you can I tell you something? Like, like, you don't have to get to God, he's getting to you. He's already gotten to you. Like God, God lives in you and is walking with you. And, and if you would just acknowledge that and just acknowledge his presence with you and, and just in, every, in any moment of the day, you can actually have a conversation with God. You don't need to retreat to go to God's presence. You don't need to retreat to a closet or retreat to a quiet place. Those are good, by the way, but you don't need to retreat from life to get into God's presence. You can take God's presence with you, okay? Find a place where you just turn it down Turn down the volume and just focus on God. And if you're not used to that, just I encourage you, one, two sentences. Give them something. And, and don't do it with formality. Don't do it with all that stuff. Just, just give them your heart. Give them your heart. Um, Isaiah 26 and 3, he says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All who, and I'll say it this way, who put their problems, their cares, their issues, who trust in, who have that time of prayer, who fix their thoughts on you and i like to think of prayer as i like to think of prayer like that like an offload moment for me it really is prayer for me sometimes is an offload moment because there are things in my life that i can't control and i can't do anything about do you guys have anything in your life like that where you where there's some things that you can't control and you cannot change there are things in so prayer becomes this time part of prayer is this offload moment where you go god i can't control it i can't change that can you take it it's, it, and Jesus says, cast your cares on me because I care for you. It's this time, it's just this beautiful offload moment where I like, I don't need to carry this all throughout my day and worry about this problem and drag it around me. No, I can say, God, I can't change it. Can't do anything about it. God, will you take this and take control of that? You can, God, thank you. And I can offload that. It's this beautiful offload moment. And peace, the Bible says, peace comes to those whose thoughts are fixed on him. This is the way the New Testament says in Colossians 3, verse 2. It says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Let me say it this way. If you don't have a moment in your day where, where you are thinking about heaven instead of everything going on in earth, you're probably going to be pretty low on the peace meter. You're probably not going to have very much peace in your life if you can't get outside, if you can't get your thoughts outside of just this earth and have a moment in your day where you get above it. And you start to fix your eyes heavenward. Amen, somebody? Here's number three. I'm just giving you some ways. You can transform your thinking. You can master the art of transformed thinking. It'll change your life. The third thing is find a person to stretch your thoughts. You may want to write like people by that because it's not just person. But find a person. Find some people to stretch your thoughts. I want to, let me say something to you. Your life would be so great if you just lined it up with God more, if you let God work in your life. But even then, can I tell you something? You will not achieve the full life that God has for you unless you include God's people. That's, and that's God's plan. You will never do, you'll never become all that God desires you to become unless you include God's people. In fact, in one place in the Bible, God says, hey, if you have a sin, um, come confess that thing to me. 
But, but if you want to be healed of that sin, you want to experience healing, don't you come to me alone with that one. You need, you, he, says, he says, you need to get around some elders and brothers and sisters in Christ and come into agreement with that. That's, those of you extra note takers, that's James chapter 5, verse 16, where God says, look, you, there are some things that you cannot do alone. Healing is one of those things. God says, you know, I, I, I like to work in groups and work around. That's why I encourage you guys, here's the action for this one, to get in a small group. Get in a small group. Now, we're in a little semester break, but groups are starting here in about three weeks. We have a whole bunch of groups, a variety of groups for every kind of person. Actually, next Sunday is group link. And next Sunday is group link. And we, we have it at 6.30 p.m. right here in this worship center. So you'll come to church, do your thing, go home, do your thing. You'll come back at 6.30. You can meet all the leaders, all the small groups, all the curriculum and, and, and material. We're going to have snacks provided. It's just a casual environment. Come and go as you please. But get into a small group. And the goal for this, the goal is just for you to have a relationship with Christians. Check it out. Who are giving you better thoughts than some of the other people in your life that are feeding you thoughts. You know, you weren't, be- you weren't born with stinking thinking, right? You weren't born with that bad, with those bad thoughts. You were fed those bad thoughts. Those bad thoughts came from primarily your social interactions, right? So I would encourage you, and I, I'm actually, I've heard a few stories of some people like in this, in this series, they're thinking more about what they're thinking about, and they've been able to identify some thoughts that are coming from their friends. They said, man, I, and a couple of people came and said, man, I, I was talking to this, and, and then she said this, or... And I thought, what in the world? I got, who's, who, I have this speaking in my life. And they were I, be able to identify some negativity and some things in their own life. So I'd encourage you, like, look around. Look around you and see the thoughts that are manifesting themselves because you are picking up your thinking by the people you're around. And some of you need to get around the right people. Some of you don't have control of the negative people in your life, and some of you do. But I've made a conscious decision to not have Three types of people in my life, and you may want to include this. I encourage you to include this. To just, I will not be around three types of people. Negative, nasty, or know-it-alls. No, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to be around people that are negative, nasty, you know, vulgar, if they're, just, if they're vulgar, or if they're know-it-alls, like a prideful person. I just, and I'm not rude about it. I'm not like, like, hey, you don't talk like that around me. I'm not like that. I just, I just, I just remove myself from them because I'm not, I just, I just cannot because I know what it, it'll do to me. I've been there. I've been around it and what that kind of affects me. When we were getting ready to plant Discovery Church just now five years ago, or just over four years ago, but in this process of planting Discovery Church, the network we're planting with, you can't just go plant a church. You have to have a covering. Uh, and, and, and pastors and another church that just kind of says, yep, we're going to support you through this and, and be with you through this. And, and there's accountability through this. And, and so there was this church that, that and this pastor I was walking through it with in the early stages, and, and, and I had a meeting, he set up a meeting with his board, and this board didn't think like the pastor thought, and, and, and they put me through like a round of like 20 questions, and one of the things that one of the board members said to me, they said, why in the world do you think Bakersfield needs another church? Don't you think there's enough churches in Bakersfield? And I just, I, I mean, I answered the question with as much grace as I could muster, but inside I was thinking, God, please don't let me do life with these people. I can't. Like, I'm serious. I'm like, God, if you, I just, I mean, I don't know if I can do this. I was like, God, I, I don't know if I'm going to, if I can continue this whole church planting thing and do this, if this is going to be the people that are going to be speaking over it and covering over it, God, help me. Make a way, Jesus, where, where any, and, and, and throughout the process, the Lord actually, they, they didn't do it. They thought there didn't need to be another church in Bakersfield. And there was this, another pastor that, that man, Pastor Brian Overture from Harvard Assembly, so you guys know him, linked up with him, and, and, and it was just beautiful. Him and his board, they were, they were speaking like in first person. They're like, amen, Pastor. We can do this, and we can do that. They just started, oh, we can do children's ministry like over here, and we can do, get this building. I'm like, that's what I need in my life. I need some people that can believe and encourage me. And you, I'm telling you, you need some people in your life that are going to encourage you. You need to look at who's in your life and make sure that the people that are around you are the right people. So start making some plans now. Start making the plans now. Maybe you need to cut, carve out a day of your schedule where you, where you know, I'm going to do a group that day. I'm going to get connected to some people that day. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another. 
Man, we want to inspire to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect the meeting together as some people do. One translation says some people are in the habit of doing that. They think, no, I got this. I can handle life all on my own. I don't need a group. I don't need relationships. I don't need people to rely on to share my stuff with. I don't need that. Yes, you do. Look, if you want to do it God's way, if you want to do life God's way, you do. If you want to have the best year ever, you do. You, you need to get some people in your life, but encourage, he says, one another. So the question is, do you have that place where you can walk in and they encourage the fire in you? Where they just, they just encourage you, they bless you, they, they see your potential, they speak blessing over you. You need that place in your life. Especially now, he says, as you see the day of Christ return drawing near. And honestly, what that means, that last sentence means, is because this world is getting worse and worse, it's getting harder and harder to live in, you need the right people around you. Yeah, that's number three, you know, just the transform thinking. We want to transform our thoughts. We can master it if we, if we just put this into practice. I'm just giving you some really practical tools. You can do this today, and I'm telling you, you can become a brand new person because of it. Here's number four. Find a purpose to land your thoughts. Find a purpose to land your thoughts, that it might not make so much sense right now, but write it down, let me kind of explain it to you. Because the healthiest thoughts that you can think are thoughts about your purpose. They're, the, the healthiest thoughts that you can think are thoughts about why you're here. So, so the healthiest thoughts, like in the middle of the problem, okay, I have this problem, I have this challenge, there's this difficulty, but I know why I'm here. I know why I'm on this planet, I know why I exist, I know why I'm striving for it, I got work to do. I know there's a problem, but I to do. That's the healthiest. You know, the most miserable people on earth are not circumstantially miserable. They're not. There's not it's not because of their, their circumstances. No, the most miserable people on the planet are those who don't know why in the world they're on the planet. They don't, they don't, have, they don't have a joy set before them to endure their cross. They don't know the purpose of their, plan, of their, of their pain. So the healthiest thoughts that you could think are thoughts about your purpose, why you exist. And the reality is here that, that this is a hallmark, you guys, of, of Discovery Church. It's like a centerpiece of everything we want to do and everything, everything designed here at Discovery Church is actually to get you to this place where you would discover your purpose in Christ. And that's why we call Discovery Discovery. It's like it's the whole why behind everything we do is to get you to a place where you have purpose inside of you. You're living with purpose. You're on mission with God. The Bible says it this way, Romans 12, 2. I mean, I, we've read this a couple times. I want to give you the, the sentence right after it, though. It says, don't conform any longer. Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And then something happens. He says, okay, if we don't conform to the world and we let God transform us, man, you're going to put into practice the transformed mind. This is what happens. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You're going to know his purpose for your life. His good, pleasing, and perfect will, he says. And I'm telling you, once you get your mind right, the things that keep me clean, the things that keep me on fire for God, the things that keep me, you know, able to come and speak to you and want to pastor this church and, and, and be a good dad and a good husband is because I know exactly why I'm on this planet. I'm not wandering aimlessly and I'm not easily altered off my target, okay? I have a purpose for living. I have a destiny. And although there's trials and tribulation along the road, nothing's going to stop me from fulfilling the mission that God has called me to do. You need a purpose for your life. And that purpose, I'm telling you, you need to find a purpose to just land, to anchor yourself to this year in 2018. That's why I asked for two weeks. Two weeks, attend the next steps. That's what the next steps are all about. It's a two-week process. We call it step one, owning the vision. Step two, fulfilling your purpose. Step two is actually today at 430. And we, we help you discover and fulfill your purpose in Christ. Like, if you don't know why you're on this planet, you're going to have a tough time again in 2018. You're not going to be able to see beyond your problems, beyond the pain. And you need something bigger than your pain. You need something bigger than your problems. And God has a plan for your life. I believe if you could hear God speak today, if he could speak to you audibly, he'd say something like, hey, let's settle yesterday and let's focus on the future together. i got a plan for your life.
I believe he'd tell you that. I believe he'd want you to know that, that yesterday is gone. Stop getting trapped in, in thinking about yesterday and start focusing on my plan of a hope and a future for your life. If you don't know it, we set up our entire church for this reason for you to know it. And I'd invite you to come today at 430 for step two. It was, lunch and child care is all provided. But man, you need to know, you need to find a purpose to land your thoughts. If you want to master the art of transformed thinking, Find a purpose to anchor, to land your thoughts. And then, man, after you get that inside of you, you're going to need this. You're going to need number five. Find a power to fuel your thoughts. Find a power to fuel your thoughts. And this is what I mean by this, because listen to me, guys. When God speaks to you, he's going to tell you to do something um, bigger than what you can do. That's how God works. And it's really genius. This is a genius thing about God. Like, because he will inspire you to greatness. He'll inspire you to do something significant, something, something that you can't do without him. And this is genius part about God is because he, you were never intended just to go and do life by yourself. He always wanted to be with you and do it with you. We need to find a power to fuel our thoughts. That's why the Bible says that God sent the Holy Spirit to us. I'm actually bringing you um, this year a series of teachings on the Holy Spirit because if you, don't, if you don't understand how God wants to walk by you daily, like right beside you kind of God, not the in heaven kind of God, but the right beside you kind of God, you'll never achieve what God has for you. You'll never be able to achieve it until you, until you find a power to fuel those thoughts. That's why we must open up our lives, extra note for you, open up our lives to the power of the Holy Spirit, and I hope you do that today. I hope, I hope you do that this year. That in, in, in some of us, we're kind of, um, you know, we, we're adverse to the power of God, maybe be, and freaked out a little bit by it because of its misuse in many churches. Maybe that, that's been misused in settings and it scared a lot of us away. But you're going to have to have God's power to pull off what he wants you to pull off in this life. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So you're thinking, and God says, I, I want to do more. I want to do more than what you're thinking. How does that happen? According to his power at work within us. God wants to give you a power to fuel those thoughts. I was reading, um, uh, listening in, uh, to Craig Rochelle, a pastor of Life Church. He's, he's um, a, a, like a mentor of mine. He's speaking into my life and, and someone that I listen to and, and look to for leadership and devotion. One of the pastors that I listen to very often among many other pastors. But Craig Rochelle from Life Church is one of those pastors. And years ago, I, I, I remembered he had this statement. And I wanted to include it in part of my 21 days of prayer and fasting. And he, he had this statement that he just, he just said to himself at the beginning of every day. He declared this over his life. And so during this 21 days, I've been reading this to myself and declaring it. And I just want to kind of share it with you. And I'll post this online later so maybe you can adapt it because I've taken his and I've just kind of made it my own. But let me share with you kind of this, this adaptation of the kind of thoughts we need to have and be thinking and declaring over our life. It says, Jesus is first in my life. I exist to serve and glorify him. I love my wife and I will lay down my life to serve her. My children will love God and serve him with their whole hearts. I will nurture, equip, train and empower them to do more for God's kingdom than they could possibly imagine. I am growing closer to Jesus every day. I am anointed, empowered, equipped, and called to reach people far from God. My words, thoughts, and imaginations are under the power of Christ. I take all thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. I wake up with purpose, direction, and meaning every day of my life. I love people and believe the best about others. I am disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desires in me. I am anointed, creative, innovative, focused, and blessed beyond measure because the Holy Spirit dwells within me. I equip leaders. That's something I do. It's who I am. I bring my best and then some. It's what I do after my best that's making the biggest difference. The world will be different and better because I serve Jesus today. I am a servant of the Most High God. Come on, somebody. You can do this. You can, you can master the art of transformed thinking, and it can change your life, but you're going to need a power. You are to fuel it. You're gonna, and, and so just like last week, where are you again? I want to invite you 
to encounter Jesus with us. Before you, I know I already gave you the last feelings, but don't rush this. Don't, don't leave in this part. I want you to really maybe open yourself up to God just a little bit more and say, Holy Spirit, come on through. Come, come work inside of my life. And then and we got some announcements and some more things to share, but don't miss God in this moment. Can you just stand with me all across this worship center? And I'd encourage you even, right where you are, can you begin to posture your life for power, right now for a touch from God? Can you lift up your hands? Just even if you lift them like this, if this makes you comfortable, and maybe even like this, just, just, just lift your hands right where you are, however you're comfortable. Will you posture yourself for a power and invite the Holy Spirit to do what only He can do in your life? Come on, just open up. Turn those palms up. Just, just turn them up as a sign. Holy Spirit, I, I need you. I can't do it without you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Lord.